So what's this three-casket business going to do with a merchant, anyway? Is he Portia's suitor? No, that's Bassanio. But Bassanio is too poor to marry Portia, so he asks his mate, the merchant, Antonio, to lend him some cash. Unfortunately, Antonio's cash is all tied up at sea, so he has to borrow it from a kindly old moneylender called Timothy. <laughs> Now, Timothy's daughter, Jessica, is in love with Lorenzo, a friend of Bassanio's. Nodding off already. <laughs> Sorry, mate, sounds like a right load of over-convoluted puffling porridge, if you ask me. Yeah, kind of no. On the plus side, over-convoluted puffling porridge has never let you down before. But people like a bit of edge, something new. Uh, I've got a clown called Lancelot Gobbo, <laughs> which is a very funny name. But, but what else? I, I need a big, important, timeless issue to put at the heart of the new piece. But it's not as if a big, important, timeless issue is just going to come walking through the door. Gosh, that was scary, but also wonderful, being part of such a big, important, timeless issue. Goodness, Kate, where have you been? At the anti-immigrant riots. I've been on the counter-demonstration, defending the French and Dutch refugees who have come here escaping religious persecution on the continent. It's worse than the Dutch church riots of 1593. Yes, I fear anti-European sentiment is getting worse. <laughs> Well, they're everywhere. Talking foreign and eating weird food. I mean, soft cheese, what's all that about? <laughs> cheese is meant to be hard. When I see soft, runny cheese for sale at market, oh, I feel alienated and uncomfortable in my own city. <laughs> the other day, I was confronted by a furious crowd because a woman thought I was concealing a baguette in my tights. Mm. I mean, uh, <laughs> laughable misunderstanding, of course. <laughs> Just pleased to see her. The times really are turning ugly. Our maids and matrons protest group was continually interrupted by groups of apprentice boys, demanding that we display to them our boobingtons and even threatening our honour. Strange how some men's considered response to a woman expressing a political view or merely going about her business is sexual harassment. I'm sure that in centuries hence, men will be sufficiently emotionally mature to reject such patriarchal intimidation, or, if not, women will finally begin to stand up to it and name and shame those responsible. Blimey, Kate, have a care. I mean, that could go horribly, horribly wrong. I mean, what of jolly banter? Yeah, what of harmless japes and JP japes? <laughs> Why, if women were to set out on such a chillingly threatening course, I mean, men would scarce be able to admire a perts and bum shank. <laughs> Insist upon an overly long hug with a junior employee or make <laughs> creepy observations masquerading as compliments at Christmas parties. Strangely, I think I could live with that. In the meantime, the only comfort we may take from this awful anti-European rioting is that if ever such an influx of foreigners happens again, government can prepare for it properly. <laughs> Affording extra funding for expanded community services and not simply dumping the incoming migrants on the poorest areas. Yes, at least if those lessons are learned, then something good will come of this. Meanwhile, I can't talk about prejudice, bigotry and intolerance of minorities all day. I have to find a big, important issue to put at the heart of my merchant in Venice. Uh, 